Hey everyone, this is Chris with Console Customs and today I will be taking you through the installation of our PS5 Smart Trigger Pro mod. This mod comes in two flavors. We have our mouse click version and our standard tact version. The mouse click, as the name implies, is because we use the buttons found in a standard computer mouse so you get the nice uh, sound and feel out of those and the standard tact is more of a, a silent click. So what these will do is they will take your standard trigger, which has that wide range of motion, and also the bumpers, and convert them to a short range of motion with that nice click. Now these only move about uh, one and a half to two millimeters, so you have a much shorter range of motion. That's the uh, mouse click one, you can hear that, and the standard can hear is uh, a lot quieter. So to install these we have to first open our controller so we'll move these out of the way and we can get to work. First thing we need to do is remove this black uh, trim piece which you can do with uh, your fingernail or a small uh, pry tool it really just uh, works pretty easy just to get underneath those with a fingernail and pop it forward. And then just kind of work your way up. It's just a bunch of clips, no screws yet. And we can set that out of the way. So we have two screws on the bottom here and our other screws are actually underneath R1 and L1. So we have to pop those out. So again you can use a pry tool or a pair of tweezers, um, just something to get behind the button there and just pop it forward. So with those removed we can see the other two screws and you will need a Phillips PH00 size screwdriver to remove all the screws. Go ahead and pull all four of these out. Okay, with our screws removed, we can move on to the inside of the controller. We just need to start to take this apart. We kind of need to hold it just a little bit and there's two clips right here that we need to pop off. Once we do that then the back of the shell will come off and we can set that aside. Next uh, thing we need to do is remove the battery. It's just a standard three prong plug. Pull that out. And next is the battery tray, which is held in by one Phillips screw. We need to take that apart. And here we can also see that this microphone is also connected to the battery tray. So we can use tweezers and just unplug that cable. It's just a press fit in. There's no latch or anything. We can remove that. And now before we can take this board out we need to unplug a few more ribbon cables so we have another microphone that's on the front and the uh, cable for our touchpad and the cables for the triggers. So the trigger cables have a nice little pull tab easy to grab onto and just pull those out. The uh, microphone also has a little pull tab. It's pretty small. You might be able to grab that uh, or you may need to use a pair of tweezers to pull that out. The touchpad is usually a little bit stiffer so sometimes you might need to use tweezers or small needle nose pliers just to grab that pull tab to get that one out. 
now we can take this board and we'll just flip it out of the way for the moment and we have to remove a few more screws now there's four more to remove so two on uh, the top of the rumble motors and then these two up here which are holding down part of the uh, touchpad diffuser okay with those removed we can now just take out the whole board and we'll set the front half of that aside for the moment and the next thing we need to do is get into our trigger modules so we need to remove our trigger modules those screws for those are on the front so we have two screws for each module go ahead and take those out okay so we have our trigger modules removed and we can just set the inner part of this out of the way for the moment because this is what we need to work with okay so let's get into these trigger modules to do that we first need to unplug the uh, flex for the original triggers and there are four screws we need to remove so first one here is right behind that flex connector and the other three are on the other side and both of these trigger modules are basically exactly the same besides which uh, trigger is on them so the uh, installation is the same for both triggers and the mounts are the same the modules are the same so there's no worry about uh, a left or right hand side both work for both sides all right once we have that off we can pull this top cover off and we need to pull this top piece out and we will not be putting that back in uh, because it can interfere with the mount for the new trigger and we're going to go ahead and just pull out this gear as well we'll just keep both of those out if you really want to you can completely remove the motor assembly uh, for the trigger uh, or you can leave that part in uh, but the other two pieces need to stay out so that they don't uh, interfere with anything next uh, we need to pull out this metal bar so we can remove the trigger that just flips up over the top and then here we need to move up, pull out the rubber pad and the original flex cable those will not get reused either and we can install the new flex now at this point we could also attach this to the uh, 3D printed mount before we put anything in. It might be a little easier to do it at this point. So this just kind of slides in the bottom here. Let's see if I can get that to focus up there. So there's a small slot that slides in, the button fits right in there, and then we just kind of push it down and it snaps into place. So just make sure that uh, it's sitting flat against the mount and that's ready to go. Now we can take this flex and install it right where the old one came out has the same shape there's a few little tabs to help locate it inside there fits pretty easily and then 
once that's in place we just put our trigger back just have to uh, get it over this little piece sticking out here and down in there have to hold it in place so we can put the little metal rod back in and we'll put the cover back on and again we're not putting those two other pieces back in there we're just taking the gear out so it doesn't shake around inside and we can put our screws back in okay so we've got the three screws on that side back in the next thing we want to do is just test the uh, R1 or L1 button. This happens to be the R1 before we put everything back together. Make sure it clicks and everything's in the right place. Sounds good. So we can just pop it back off again. It needs to be off to be able to screw the case back together. And now we can go ahead and mount the trigger over here. So can see it just lines up with the hole that's already there just kind of want to hold it in place and then put that last screw back in just test it clicking good and all we need to do is plug in the flex cable and that trigger is done so now we can go through the same process for the other one Okay, again, we'll just remove this little rotating arm piece and that gear out of there. Pull out the metal rod, flip the trigger off. Pull out the rubber pad, pull out the original flex. Do the same thing again and mount the new button snaps on there and we will get this flex into place Alright, so again, we'll give it a quick test with the L1 button. Clicking good. Line up our mount. Just hold it in place while we screw this last screw in. These screws we want to put in just snug, not extremely tight, just to make sure it doesn't uh, flex the mount uh, out of the way. But uh, that one's working well as well. Plug in the cable. And we're done. Now just put the controller back together. So we can go back to our piece here. Put our triggers back in place with the screws. Okay. 
Okay, both triggers are back in place. And I can start to put everything else back together. So when we put this in the front of the shell, we just need to make sure that the uh, microphone cable down here is out of the way and not getting pinched underneath. And also our touchpad cable needs to come through this small opening here like that. Now we can put our other four screws back in. So we've got the two silver ones that need to go up top and then the other two above the rumble motors. All right, those are back together. Now, the other thing we need to make sure is in the correct place is this little speaker. So this uh, had fallen out while everything was off to the side, but this just fits right down in here, uh, making sure the little pad is on that side. Now we can flip the board back over. Again, watching this microphone cable and the touchpad cable. And we can start to plug these back in. Okay, we've got uh, all those ribbon cables plugged back in, except for the one that's on the battery tray here. So we need to just put that in place with our screw. Plug our battery back in. Let's not forget about this cable for the other microphone. That microphone popped out. It's just uh, there's a little lip there that it fits underneath. All right, battery back in. And grab the back of our shell. Everything's back together. Just test our triggers, make sure it's working before we put our screws in. All right, all the screws are in. We can put our bumpers back on. They just snap on. And the last piece is the face plate that just slides in those two triangle shaped openings and snaps back on. That's it, all done. These are available on our website, consolecustoms.com, and soon on eBay and Amazon. If you have any questions, just drop us a line. Thank you.